Hey, good morning everybody, it's Mike. Thanks for jumping in here with me this morning. Let's get right to it because we got a lot of stuff, right? This week we're talking about 21 different marketing ideas. It could be videos, it could be a podcast, it could be a blog, it could be all of those things, right? And I know sometimes in our line of work, we, we're not really marketing experts, we're realtors, but we have to market ourselves. And sometimes we can get a little writer's cramp when it comes to content. So I'm trying to unblock that for you. We've already covered the first 10. Let's jump in this morning with number 11. What if, um, you made a video, a podcast, a blog, talking about what offer do you have to accept? As the seller of a property, if you get an offer, do you have to accept it? In which situations might you have to do that? So I can remember when my wife and I sold our last house, one of her big concerns was because we hadn't found the next house yet, I don't wanna sell our house until we found the next one. I'm like, well, honey, I don't really want to own two homes at the same time. So, uh, and she goes, well, then I guess we're not putting our house up for sale. I'm like, no, 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 no. Here's how this goes. And I kind of ran through it with her. And she says, but if somebody makes a full price offer on our house, don't we have to accept it? And I showed her why we didn't have to. And she went, oh, okay, well then let's put the house up for sale. She thought there were some offers that you had to accept. What do you think? And if there are, which kind of offers are those? Number 12 on our list, what should a seller disclose about their house? What do they not have to disclose? Why don't you make a piece of marketing content around that? Number 13, understanding the different types of financing that are out there. Gosh, there's so many, and to us, it's even a little confusing sometimes. Can you imagine what it is to the average consumer that only moves every 11 to 13 years? So you've got, right, you've got FHA, you've got VA. What's the difference between each of those, and what's the difference between those and conventional financing, and when does it become jumbo loans, at what point, and does it cost more, or does it cost less, and why? And then you get into the specialty products, like you've got the 2-1 the buy-downs, I've seen 3-1 buy-downs, I've seen 10-year arms, 1-year arms, 5-year arms. What are all these and who are they right for? Could you do something on that? How about number 14? It, oh, this is my favorite these days. My absolute favorite. Advice on governing your speech when you're having when you're viewing homes for sale. Now this might be a home buyer tip, but for home sellers too. What can you record and what shouldn't you record? And by the way, home buyers, when we're looking at homes, shut up, <laughs> right? I mean, we just had a situation last week where here in our office, one of our sellers had video cameras and recording devices all over their house. They could see the people viewing their home, they could hear them. And people are making catty comments and the homeowners are getting offended by this and they're getting emotional about it and well, maybe the agent should have had a conversation with them before the home was actually listed, talking about why they might not want to do that. I mean, to me, it's very normal for a home buyer to walk through a house and uh, praise the house and criticize the house. And as agents, I think we kind of want them to do that. As a seller, I don't know if I really need to hear people making fun of my decor, right? Yeah, yeah. but. What's your opinion? And could that be a marketing piece of content for you? And coming in at number 15 today, what happens, <laughs> maybe a tad morbid, but marketing, there's gotta be a hook. There's gotta be a catch. You've gotta make me wanna watch or read or listen to what you're putting out. Why would I wanna do that? Well, if you got a text from me this morning, it said, hey, missing this call could cost you big bucks, right? Maybe that prompted you to make a special effort to join the call this morning. Uh, it was my way of trying to hook you, right? As an example of the hook. Coming in at number 15, what happens 
if either the buyer or the seller die before closing, what happens? What happens if the buyer dies the day before closing? Does his estate, her estate, have to purchase the property? What would you sell, say to the spouse of the person that died? Well, look, I'm really sorry your wife died yesterday, but you still have to close this morning. I mean, what about the seller of the property? What happens if the seller dies during the under contract period? The day before closing that one of the sellers dies. What happens then? What's procedurally, what do we do? Could you make a piece of marketing content, a video, a podcast, a blog? If you're more motivated, how about all three? And talk about any of these issues. Don't have writer's cramp, don't get stuck, and don't let yourself off the hook so easy by saying things like, well, I couldn't think of anything. Because, well, I couldn't think of anything is what people say when they didn't really want to do it in the first place. And now they just let themselves off the hook. There's 15 ideas so far this week. If you'll jump in here with me tomorrow, I'm going to give you the final six. And I think you're going to like some of them. Hopefully out of the 15 so far, you've heard some things that you thought you could do. Maybe not all 15, but there's some in there that you went, I could do that. Then do. And if you did, wouldn't you be going out there and making it happen for yourself today?